I'm Tim Kittrow. This is not NBA Jam. I repeat, not NBA Jam. This is a paid-for introduction for Big Roy and the Fat Guy. Yeah, you could just make it out to cash. Thanks. And uh, are those my smokes over there? I'll take them anyway. I guess uh, you could say sometimes I'm just a real humdinger. What's up, YouTube? It's the NFL Picks Against the Spread for Week 15. Fat Guy, this is... Uh, uncharted waters for us 10 games below 500 we've been doing this since 2017 and uh, never have we been 10 games below 500 i believe any any thoughts on our start 100, or 100 percent, 100 percent. this people just go to the end of these picks videos sometimes a lot of these just say contest pick it's the information and i've been trying to get at that that's why we switched to closing line value is this how i would normally pick a game no but i'm trying to obtain closing line value in the games that i'm not able to do that i'm just not betting more or less right there's a lot more opportunities than just betting sides or spreads there's more of a more of a science let's call it and maybe even a philosophy to it so we've been trying to expand on the uh the verbiage around that i'm not actually too concerned with the the win loss record to be honest on to the Thursday night game, and this one's going to be five-star entertainment between the Kansas City Chiefs and the L.A. Chargers. Fat guy, Chargers, three-and-a-half-point dogs early on. Uh, 99% of probably the first 100 bets have come in yeah. on the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, do you like the closing line value on either side for this game? I kind of do on the, the Chargers, which is ominous. But then again, a 99-1, like, I doubt it's even. I bet it's the first 10 maybe, right? Like... I'm not sure I, I have that much faith in that uh, early uh, uh, split in uh, betting volume. But I think there is on uh, the L.A. Chargers. I think this is more likely to go down to three. But that's a little bit of an easy prognostication considering it's L.A.C. has been, you know, I bet it right when they open. They're really bad juice at minus three and a half. So it does, three is a more natural line. So that might be a little bit misleading for people that are, uh, uh, you know, trying to calculate like <laughs> me obtaining clv is like if the, the juice isn't represented in this contest or uh in this video numerically on the screen but uh that being said too especially like the chiefs did get a blow but so did the chargers and i think three is the more natural line so in the idea of the contest i think three and a half is the right play and it will be the la chargers and i did bet them in real life as well at this number with not exactly juice that i'm happy about Next up, Fat Guy, uh, we have two Saturday games. And uh, interesting enough, the next two weeks, two Saturday games, the Fat Guy Dream, Cleveland Browns and Indianapolis Colts play uh, both Saturday games for some strange reason. Uh, but on to the actual game, Las Vegas Raiders at the Cleveland Browns. Browns are six-point favorites at home. Almost a little bit of a surprising number there at six. Do you think there's closing line value on either side? I don't think it's a surprising number. I think this goes to seven. So it's six and a half bad juice right now. So, um, or six regular juice, like it's depending on how you want to swing it. The Raiders really took it on the chin, um, uh, from the chiefs. I just feel like there's more likely to be, um, Cleveland betters. Like it's not huge though. And this is a really inelastic number, by the way, is six and a half and six considering, the value of six has just skyrocketed over the last three years. And people see people I have read in the comment section don't <laughs> think that an emphasis should be put on key numbers, but it should. We're betting on numbers. That's what the spread is. We're not betting on whose team's defense does this or whose team's offense is better for X, Y, and Z. It's not what we're doing. We're betting on will the Cleveland Browns win by seven or more? That's that's the question. That's the, the we're betting numbers literally. So our key focus should be on the probability of uh, numerical combinations between the two. The Browns are they better than the uh, Raiders? Of course, but this is where the market is generated. How much better are they at home, not on a neutral field? So the opening line is uh, opening line with appropriate juice on both sides is Cleveland minus six, and I do believe uh, it, it'll probably close around closer to Cleveland minus seven or cleveland minus six and a half with bad juice so in this case i will take the cleveland browns even though traditionally this would be a raiders play all day but again this is about uh, obtaining closing line value for this season of big rye and the fat guy and we haven't done that bad of a job of it so i didn't bet this in real life full disclosure though but as far as the contest goes i think this is a reasonable selection with the cleveland browns laying six points and this uh just to throw this in last week a lot of 
interesting lines, like lots of weird lines. And uh, I know we're just, it's a small sample. It's 12 games, but favorites went um, nine and three against the spread on closing or on the, uh, in, on the picks video lines. And this is another one of those ones that like we're getting closer to the end of the season and these lines might not be like what you would expect at the start of the season, which at least I don't. I know I'm taking a a long time to explain this, but uh, (laughs) the six just feels it feels fishy to me. Like it feels like it's uh, inflated up, uh, but that could be exactly what you're saying. Like there might be more value on Cleveland going and this could even push up higher, even though like six or seven for two teams that have kind of been. You, but know, you, relatively... you find them equal, but there's, you know, there's also two publicly like, they are probably not considered equal though. No, I don't think team strength is even close, and I don't think coaching pedigree is even close either. Um, so this is more a natural reflection. If you're going to go on their what, 13, 14 game sample size, yeah, yeah, this does seem like too many points. But then again, if you're looking at it through that type of like results oriented lens, see that's. This is another argument. There's called frequentists and Bayesians. So frequentists go off how many times has X event happened in the past, whereas Bayesian uh, prognosticators uses Bayes' theorem, which is using all of the results to approximate what the true center is. And I think this is the line that would more reflect that type of an outlook. And also, too, to to satisfy frequentists, too, double secret probation, uh, Dean Wormer, Animal House-style lines like the... uh, Minnesota Vikings um, fishy line against the uh, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers resulted in a 29 nothing start. It didn't finish that way. It finished rather excitingly, but it did. That was a really outlier start to what was perceived as a really outlier line. So these things do happen. I, I don't think this is as weird as Big Rye does, but I do think um, uh, six is the play contest wise. On to the next one, New England at the Indianapolis Colts. Colts, uh, one-point favorites at home, uh, despite, uh, well, I guess both teams have, have been quite strong over the over the last, uh, you know, seven, eight weeks. Uh, Fat Guy, what are your thoughts on this game? Well, th- but this is another thing where, where it goes back to this, uh, this more Bayesian model, I would say, for... Um, uh, rather than results-based or an ELO or frequentist model is, look... They're, the Colts are minus one favorites. They're playing the number one seed uh, in the conference. And why are they favored? Because, you know, uh, probably on a neutral field, they're small dogs. You know what I mean? I guess they're, uh, depending on how much you take home field, they're they're very small. Like, they're very small underdogs on a neutral field against New England. I actually think Indy is a better team overall. Um, it's a little bit crazy, maybe a little bit optimistic, but I did – book a bet i had indy minus one at minus 106 the very opening price um from pinnacle which opened before heritage which is very surprising uh so that being said i do like the colts i do think there's value at this number i do think if it's minus one bad juice just uh just juice it yeah or sorry just reverse tease it like do the other thing sell the points off go to minus two and a half right it's very difficult to win a football game by one or two two is a more frequent number uh, than it has been uh, because of obviously missed paths and what what have you. But again, like these key numbers to to <laughs> combat the comment section, they matter. We're betting on the numbers. We're not betting on the uh, the the metrics of the offense, defense, and special teams. I guess in a way you are if you are modeling, but if you're using any sort of other approach other than modeling, which I think is very difficult to do without the aid of very high technology, um, I think th- that's the way to go is betting key numbers. So Indy minus one is the play uh, in real life and in the contest. On to the Sunday games, Washington at Philly. Philly four-point favorites at home. Fat guy, do you see any closing line value in this game? <sighs> I'm just going to choose Philadelphia on the off chance that Heineke doesn't play. He did come out, but like, I don't really like this game. I, th- I think traditionally I would take uh, – uh, the football team. I, you and I tend to have a football team bias, but I don't have any mm-hmm. insight into line movement on this game. I don't think um, four is, I will say, an elastic number though, because four doesn't matter. And again, it is a key. Uh, key numbers are, you know, three, six, and seven. So the no man's land between three and a half and five and a half. You could see a lot of movement here, and I could end up wrong on that, just because it's a more elastic section. It's the most elastic section 
um, uh, within the number seven. So I, there, is, there could be movement. I just don't have a good idea, honestly, of which way it would go. I'd love to tell you. I'd love to do the gold seal lock, but I don't have it. And just for contest sake, we're going to take Philadelphia. And we're going to lay the four points. On the next one, Dallas at the New York Giants. Giants 11.5 point dogs at home. Fat guy, any closing line value on this one? Well, this is going to also highlight another weakness of ours in terms of understanding uh, uh, player injury and likelihood of players coming back, which is something you and I are going to have to work on among the mountain of uh, other work we have to try and yeah. uh, come closer to the truth, as they say in uh, in uh, quaint finance. Uh, but we're getting there. You know, we're peeling the onion. We probably will never get there. But the idea is just to get close, get close to the center. So the one issue with this is who's going to be playing quarterback, right? That that is the issue. Obviously, if I was assured that Daniel Jones was playing, eleven and a half would be okay. Do I really want eleven and a half points with the Giants with Mike Glennon playing? I, I probably not, to be honest. So, when in doubt, take the points and just call it a contest pick, and that'll be just that. Eleven and a points with the Giants purely for the contest. Book it. Next up, we have Tennessee traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers, who are two and a half point dogs at home. Fat guy, your thoughts on this line? Um, I think this is good value on the Steelers. I've already bet him full disclosure to win. So I got Steelers at like plus 128, plus 129. I would have to check my records. Uh, another really good, uh, there's a reason to keep records, Google Sheets. And you should also have it whenever you, you sign up for your, uh, for whenever you create your Google Sheet to track your betting, um, uh, your betting records, make sure that you, you take down the closing line to see if you beat it. It is important. We'll take that all day. And there's a lot of like posers on Twitter, sorry to sidetrack, and they talk about, oh, yeah, over an 80-game sample, they did X, Y, and Z. Anything is really possible over those 80 games. You could even do a uh, simple Monte Carlo uh, a simulation to, to decide how lucky is X, Y, and Z. And and it's, it's, it's pretty lucky, but um, beating closing line is linear. There's no variance to it, right? If you're beating a closing line, you're going to make money long term. The closing line, of course, of an efficient market at a top end sports book, not, you know, uh, Russian ping pong that people like to bet on late at night with a square, uh, with a square soft book. I guess it's kind of redundant square soft book. Uh, anyways, that being said, I did take the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think there is going to be some value. I think this close is a, I'm going to say like Tennessee minus one or Tennessee money line, like minus one thirteen, something like that. So I do think there's that value. And I think it's more better realized in taking the money line. Um, we are filming this during Sunday night football. So this is one of those games where it could be a lot more malleable to early betting with the lower limits and it could shift. And again, I could be wrong, but I just think it's a very far cry. The idea of it going to Tennessee minus three. So I'd rather just take Pittsburgh to win, realize the equity a lot firmer with a money line uh, win or loss Pittsburgh to win Pittsburgh plus two and a half in the contest. Square and soft. Uh, fat guy taking a nice shot at me. Next up, the New York Jets at the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins, eight and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, is their closing line value in your eyes? I think so, and I think it's on the Jets of all things. They got they did get blown out, but like, could you really? Can you really lay eight and a half on Miami? I don't think there's much movement in this uh, scenario, anyways. And I'd rather I take the Jets at eight and a half than have it go down to say seven and a half. Like, not that eight's a big key number, but I'd rather have it than not over nine. Like, I'd rather risk it having eight and a half and it go to nine. Like, that's not really a bad pie on my face. I don't really care. Whereas if it goes down to like even seven, like that'd be really annoying. I don't think it's going to have that much legs though. And this isn't like a bet in real life situation too. So purely for the contest, we're going to take the Jets. I'm not sure how much mobility this line has, much like a couple of the other ones too. At least I'm honest about uncertainty, and this is one of those situations as well. So we're going to take the Jets uh, in the contest because when in doubt, take the points. So it's going to be the Jets plus eight and a half. Next up, Houston at Jacksonville in maybe the best five-star entertainment game uh, of the year. Jacksonville gets uh, the historic three points at home. Fat guy, yeah. your thoughts on this line? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I have. I'm gonna. I think three is a great number for Houston. I gotta be honest. Um, the Davis Mills uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence matchup, I don't think is exactly what everyone dreamed of. At this point, Lawrence has really struggled. There's a lot of bad news. 
about Jacksonville. And it has been, you know, it has been realized on the field. Let's be honest here. Just a real bad stinker. I mean, the, the Texans lost, but they put more, much more of a fight than the Jags would in the eyes of the casual better. I think this is going to be, this is my pick for the lowest bet uh, volume bet game of the week which would mean that the market factors probably mean the less, the least in this game of any of the games on the slate. That being said, I still think three is too many points. I think it should be a Jacksonville minus two. I think that's probably the most fair line. But so that, that being the case, three key, being the key number, I get the push with three. Let's take the Houston Texans. On to the next one, Arizona at Detroit. And I know when we were putting this in, you asked how high is this line going to be? The answer is 13 and a half points for the Arizona Cardinals. In fact, is there closing line value on either side? This is the weirdest one. So if we're taking the spread, I, I like Arizona and laying the 13 and a half. And I had like, um, it, it's it's not a, a theory that's been bouncing around in, uh, in my brain for about a year now it, is the real dichotomy between spread and uh, uh, between spread and money line bets. And this is one of them watching Detroit's decision-making like they're really trying to win the game. Like they went for it on fourth down on their own 33 yard line. Um, just, just today against Denver. And you like to see that the problem with that though, is it's going to have very high variance on, on a spread pick. You're not really like you're more likely to win than you are a cover. You know what I mean? Because that decision is going to snowball more likely into points scored for you or points scored for your opponent. So it's it, it it leaves the spread almost in a limbo state where it's not like you're not going to realize the value with the Lions. Do I think the Lions are going to beat the Cardinals? Absolutely not. But at their odd set of uh, – what is their odd set? Uh, plus 600, Big Rye? What do we got here? I'll pull it up and see what I can see. Detroit. Sorry about the interlude and a little bit of dead air, but I did need to get well, the. the... <laughs> Pardon me. the uh, The line is is technically not up at Pinnacle, so we we can't see. Um, no, I guess we can make some inference. Yeah, from another thirteen and a half. Because see, that's see, this is this is where we're getting into something interesting. Not all thirteen and a half point dogs are the same. And can I say Detroit's a live dog? Absolutely. They've been, they've been in a bunch of games. They beat Minnesota. They were one score away from beating the Rams, one score away from being the Ravens. I think they're more likely a team to just bet to win if you are going to bet them. But you're going to have you're, you're going to it's a very high variance play. So that being said, this is a spread contest. We're betting the number. I think Arizona's far more likely to cover the 13 and a half. Um uh, well, not far more likely. I think it's it's a better selection. And if you like Detroit, I think you're better off um, gambling, put your gambling shoes off, and uh, betting them to win. And I, I don't like the uh, inference that when people say, uh, oh, a big underdog like that can never win. The, Amanda Nunes lost probably the biggest upset in UFC history in a title fight yesterday. These things do happen. Detroit beat Minnesota outright. Like, these things do happen. It's not, it's not that crazy. So if I were betting in real life on this game, I would, if it was a spread, I'd lay it with Arizona. And if I were betting a money line, I would most certainly take Detroit at the odds that are given. And uh, I think it's, I think it's just assuming, do your own calculations here. Make sure it lines up with 13 and a half on a linear distribution before you make any type of money line. And me, you know, throwing out what number is good. You know, I'm yeah, just using money- plus 600 at a, as a as a benchmark fat guy is pretty spot on like it's going to be you know plus 500 to plus 700 depending on how uh your book adjusts the juice for that Correct. game and then uh just to add on the nunez fight um she was minus 5000 at the start of the second round live on juiced up live <laughs> odds uh so thank you 98 percent and she ended up losing uh, shortly after this on really happens one. all the time <clears throat> On to the next one, Fat Guy. Carolina at Buffalo. Buffalo, 12-point favorites at home. Uh, I was going to say who you got, but really, where's the closing line value uh, in your eyes? I think Buffalo, and this is another situation. I think Buffalo is a bad uh, – they're they're more likely to get upset, and they're, uh, they're more likely to get upset, and they're less uh, – but they're more likely to cover. I don't mind big spreads with uh, uh, 
with the bear or sorry with the bills like 12 points that's it sounds ominous but i i like the way that they play i i don't think it's like <laughs> they throw far too much whereas they're susceptible to being beat like point in case like jacksonville beat them nine six you know it's nice to get a result to back up my theory i had this theory before that game but again that could just be some sort of biases that i'm exuding there but i do think i don't mind laying a big spread with buffalo contrary to taking big points with uh, detroit so the the play is going to be buffalo minus 12 and i'm going to contemplate this idea um uh, you know as far as betting i haven't made a uh, bet on this full disclosure but i am considering it so buffalo minus 12 is going to be the contest pick i'm just taking a look here buffalo had 54 uh throwing attempts uh josh allen had 12 carries uh the running backs seven carries so you can kind of get the breakdown there of how many are scrambles of those josh mm-hmm. allen runs probably you know what I mean? most of them so it's a uh it's, it's a six it's to one imbalance to more yeah. or less that team's going to score more points or they're going to lose. Very simple. On to the next game. Cincinnati at Denver. Denver, one and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, is there closing line value on this game? Uh, I I see it in the way of Cincinnati. Um, This is another one where it's very malleable. I could see it going all the way up to Denver minus two and a half and all the way the other way to like Cincinnati minus one and a half. I don't love this game in terms of closing line value. I'm just going to take Cincinnati. Them putting up a good fight against San Francisco and going to overtime, um, unfortunately not able to pull away with it considering the IU touchdown, I think might go a little bit further away than, you know, Denver beating a one-win team in the Detroit Lions, in which what was kind of a first-half scrappy game that just was really un- unfortunate for the Lions in the second half. Uh, that being said, are any of those uh, – uh, do up, do down situations uh, relevant in terms of uh, line mobility. I'm not really sure. I don't love this game. It's mostly a contest pick. I'm going to take the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, and I think they're a better team than Denver, uh, the Denver Broncos, but it is on the road. And uh, this is purely a contest pick, but let's go Bengals. On to the next one, Atlanta Falcons at the San Francisco 49ers, eight point favorites at home. Fat guy is their closing line value. I'm, I'm going to assume, or sorry, I'm going to assume. I'm going to say maybe slightly. It's another one I don't think has a ton of mobility on the 49ers. I could see this line going to SF minus 10. So I think it's more likely to go that way than people, you know, betting on Atlanta. Them beating the Carolina Panthers isn't going to carry much sway. San Francisco beating a worthy Cincinnati Bengals. I think that carries a little bit more. So uh, we're going to take the 49ers here. And I, I, I would say it's more likely to go to 10 than it is to 7. So 49ers is going to be the play. But again, this is one that I don't think has much mobility. And you're going to see this with the next few videos in the next few weeks is there's these lines are going to get more solid. It's kind of like the idea, like uh, betting late season baseball. It's very hard to beat them. It's very hard to win at late season baseball. The lines are just, they get sharper and sharper and sharper. Like I said, if you use any sort of Bayesian tactics, you have more, um, uh, you have more kicks at the can to kind of, zoom like to kind of zone in and get that uh that middle bullseye you know what i mean you're allowed to infer a lot more uh uh a lot more data than you could um uh, earlier in the season so i think this is a um it's just going to get a lot tougher and a lot of these aren't going to have the line mobility that i that you would think so uh in this case i'm just gonna take san francisco i think it's more likely to go to 10 than 7 next up seattle at the la rams rams are getting seven points at home well, they're seven-point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Well, we're going to be taking the Seattle Seahawks. I actually think seven points is too many. I do think there's going to be closing line value on the Seahawks. Seven points. It's a little, I think this is a bit much, right? Um, uh, the Russell Wilson like re- negative recency bias, I think, is going to is, has died down quite a bit, uh, especially after that San Francisco win and getting the job done against Houston. Um, I think. I think betters are more likely to bet on Seattle at this key number of seven. So, uh, you know, and I, I like Seattle all the way down to five and a half. Five and a half, I would take the Rams. So I think there's a sweet spot, and there might even be a middling opportunity considering how good the number. If you got Seattle at seven, and let's just say I don't think it'll go that down. I think it's more likely to close at Rams minus six. If you get Seattle at seven and close at Rams minus five and a half, you have huge middling opportunity. 
six is a very key number and seven is a high push frequency so rams by six or seven really isn't that unlikely of a spot and most middling plays afford you around a 25 to one opportunity uh, assuming that you bet a lot of money early so you would have to the one issue about is you do have to bet on line movement and mobility and you do need a little bit of skill in that and i don't like you know (laughs) giving out financial advice but i do think that there is a chance had does it go to five and a half which i don't think it will i do think it'll slip to six though seattle plus seven i think is a play next up fat guy green bay at baltimore baltimore two and a half point dogs at home is there closing line value in this game? This is, this is a tough one because uh, <laughs> the Packers are playing right now. And so this is technically a look ahead line. And um, uh, Baltimore, we have quite a bit of uncertainty, I would say, with the uh, uh, ankle injury to Lamar Jackson. So even if Jackson plays, what type of mobility is going to have? And he's one, he's probably the most affected quarterback who, uh, <laughs> if he has limited mobility. And, and that would make it a very grave difficulty let's say so the play will just be green bay because this line isn't really available it's not actually realistic but that's the best that we have to work off of at the moment considering green bay is currently in the second quarter down 10 nothing to the bears in the game just off to my right screen so for that uh case it's going to be green bay minus two and a half and i'm curious to see the health of lamar jackson next up saints at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Buccaneers are getting 11 points at home. Fat guy, is there a CLV in this game? I, I'm, I'm going to say there might be some on the Saints. I, I, the thing is, I don't want to lose 10. I don't, wanna, I don't want it to go below 10 and a half. I don't want to hit a push frequency of 10. I don't, want, I don't want Tampa Bay minus 10. I don't think there's a lot of line mobility on this one either. I could be wrong, and there could be a lot of shifts because some of these are in like the no man's land. Like, 11 to 11 to 13 aren't really key numbers 11 to 12 certainly aren't so tampa bay could easily move or fluctuate like it wouldn't take much and you're less likely to see like bad juice 11 bad juice 12 than you were standard juice 11 standard juice 12s so uh for for all of those reasons i i think i i just don't want to lose the key number of 10 and a half we're gonna take new orleans it's purely a contest pick i'm unsure of line mobility and then the final game, the Monday Nighter. I know uh, there's been some grief on these two playing on Monday night, but the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. Bears plus four at home. A fat guy is their closing line value on this one. Well, it's, it's starting to look good now because I made this selection before uh, uh, before this game uh, uh, commenced. Uh, the Packers and the Bears, and there should be some recency bias if the Bears are able to pull off this. What I would call is a stunning upset of the Green Bay Packers, much akin, not that I'm saying, I still don't think they are, but, you know, much like the Lions can win a game, the Bears are up 10 nothing against, uh, what, the number two seed in the NFC. So let's be honest, these things do happen. So that being said, if the Bears are able to pull that off, there will be closing line value on the Bears plus four. And I think the four will slide to three and a half real quick. It's not that big of a gap. I don't even think a shift of getting Bears plus four to Bears plus three and a half would even beat the juice long term, the gap between those two numbers. But in this contest, I would much rather have it. I could see this game settling at uh, Bears plus three, Minnesota minus three, um, uh, pending on the results of this game. But it is a look ahead line, and uh, it is a little bit opportunistic considering I do know. But I did make this selection, full disclosure, before this game had commenced. And again, this isn't over. There could be an injury. Lots of things could change in the uh, run-up to this game on Monday night. That being said, it'll be a contest pick, considering I can't actually get this line because it is during the Sunday nighter, uh, Chicago plus four. All right, Fat Guy, on to the lightning round. Chiefs, Chargers. Chargers. Raiders, Browns. Browns. Patriots, Colts. Colts. Washington football team Eagles. at the Philadelphia Eagles, Cowboys, Giants, Giants, Titans, Steelers, Steelers, Jets, Dolphins, JTS, Texans, Jags, Texans, Cards, Lions, Cardinals, Carolina Panthers at the Buffalo Bills, Bills, Bengals, Broncos, Bengals, Falcons, Niners, Niners, Seahawks, Rams, Seahawks. Packers, Ravens. Packers. Sunday night football, New Orleans at Tampa Bay. Saints. Monday night football, Minnesota at Chicago. Bears. 
Fat guy, our week 13 leader was Bravo Billy going 10 and 3. And my mistakes, Mud, Mud went 10 and 4 this week. Uh, but Bravo Billy made, made his pick Saturday. I made a mistake, didn't get it updated, uh, but I have it updated now. Bravo Billy winning the week 10 and 3, having an OU of 37, which was closest to the pin of the 24 points scored. And choosing one less game, no doubt. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't want to say this is the first time in BRFG pick history, but uh, I can't remember off the top of my head anybody winning a week uh, without that uh, Thursday night game. I think it's game. happened. You're, you're, you don't got a good Rolodex. And then on to the leaderboard for week 14. CSK sitting pretty up top at 11-1. and one. Corey Andy as well, second place, 10-2 and two overall. And then we have a plethora of people with nine and eight wins. Congrats, guys, on doing so well in week 14. And then Fat Guy, the overall leaderboard. Colty Boy still sitting pretty at 60% against the spread. Pulling away a little bit. Yeah, 114 wins. At, what's that? Eight games above. So still a possible, uh, still a possibility that Cassone, Laser Jets, Worm, Coriandy, Bravo, Billy... Pretty much anyone here could catch up, but it's it's becoming harder and harder as these uh, as these weeks come. Absolutely, absolutely, and this is one of those things. Whenever I talk to people, and they're like, uh, "Oh yeah, I could I could pick at sixty percent." Well, okay. First of all, we put up stale lines on Sunday, and this is one guy out of a hundred, roughly, that have continued this contest. So it's like a one percent chance, right? Even if you're good at this, so it, and that's with the stale line advantage as well. So. I don't know. Like if people have to. I, I hope this contest puts into perspective how difficult it is to beat the juice. Because technically speaking, using stale lines, we only have what the top top eight technically that are beating the. Oh, actually, Mister Fifty Seven looks like he did miss a couple games. So I guess this top, pretty much the top ten are the only ones beating the juice, and none of them significantly, other than the top uh, the top two more or less. Yeah, 52.4 is the uh, standard VIG for Vegas Juice of minus 110, as you'd see uh, in American odds. So you can see how tough it is. Pretty much 10 people here have it. There might be a couple more. Uh, but like Fat Guy said, in a sample of 100, only really 10% of people are, are able to break even or do better, which is yeah, it's pretty crazy to think about how hard it is to, to gamble on sports. Very much difficult. better. Also, everyone much better than our 47%. Uh, for this season be big losers yeah, if you yeah. were betting all of our picks yes. all right fact on to the js 715 name of the week honorable mentions my team just lost to a team that threw the ball thrice <laughs> boy did we love it what an amazing amazing game that was an my amazing kind game. of strategy absolutely um there's a couple things i would have done differently but uh that was i enjoyed that one vegas dave stole my purse i think we know when we speak about liars here we go in the business, the tout business. Vegas Dave, golf smoke show girlfriend. You have Google pulling teeth from Jake Fromm. Love it. The Seahawks should have ran the ball, so the Patriots decided to remind them. Absolutely. What a clever uh, level of historical allegory, we'll call it. And then, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Green Bay just scored a touchdown. Bad for my OU. Big Right grew his hair, <laughs> grew his hair until a Lions win. So many acorns, I can't believe it. Uh, forgot to fill up my arrive can app because I was watching Big Rye and the Fat Guy. Glad to make your life difficult. Deck, de Dak the halls and Murray Christmas. We'll take a real easy one for that. This is the JS715 name of the week. Whoa, kaboom! JS715 name of the week. Over under one and a half for times. Fat Guy considered bending over Big Rye. Uh, take the over on that and take the over on completion. Make your picks against the spread for week 15 at BigRyanTheFatGuy.com. $100 prize in Bitcoin to regular season winner. Oh, All right, geez. Fat Guy, this was a tough show for me. You you were stellar really... as usual. Your thoughts on uh, on this uh, this week's slate of games. I, I, I did hear you mention you've bet a couple of these early. I have. Uh how do I put this? I, I do like the Steelers and I do like the Colts. Let's be real here. Doesn't mean you're going to win. It's not financial advice. But that, those are games I particularly like. And we're back to a 16 game schedule plus the Saturday game. So guys, enjoy this week and good luck for your picks against the spread week 15.